Previously, we examined several fascinating maps that challenge the traditional timeline of world exploration. One standout was the Zhanghe world map from China, dated 1418, which author Gavin Menzies used to argue that the Chinese discovered America long before Columbus. Academics often dismiss this claim, asserting that America was discovered in 1492, but this argument reflects circular reasoning. Interestingly, the map shows California as an island, aligning with Native American legends. We then delved into the advanced map-making techniques of the past. For example, the Cantino map from 1502, alongside a modern map, demonstrates an impressive level of accuracy for its time. The Puri Rice map from 1513 showed South America and an ice-free Antarctic with meticulous detail, hundreds of years before their official discovery. The rest of the world map is missing, leaving some mysteries unsolved. Another remarkable map was the Pizzagano Portal and Seafarers chart from 1424, which displayed the Atlantic Ocean and its islands with surprising precision. It accurately outlined the Canary Islands, Madeira and the Azores, debunking the myth that these maps featured mythical islands. The accuracy of these maps raises the question. Could these people have been entirely unaware of other continents? We also touched on the limitations of maps post-Columbus, which seemed to regress in detail. These cut-off maps were likely designed to mislead the non-elite about the known world, ignoring the contributions of ancient explorers, like the Norse, Egyptians, and Phoenicians, who had long navigated the seas. And then, we explored speculative evidence of pre-Columbian knowledge, including maps suggesting that Antarctica, Australia, and the Americas were once part of a unified landmass. Anyway, this is part 3 of the series, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all, to get the full picture. I hope you don't get bored. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. 9. The Hindu Maps This is an ancient Hindu map, claimed to have been in use for thousands of years, depicting the four corners of the world. In the western corner, we have Setamala, which happens to be the ancient Mayan name for one of their regions in Central America. The town of Sechimal, or Chichimal, can be found at the southern tip of Mexico, exactly at the center of the American continent. Too speculative. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe Earth did look more orderly, being surrounded by circles, as seen in Ptolemy's model. The map is from the 1883 book, Researches into the Lost Histories of America. From this book, I quote. The Japanese have maps. They are constructed in the most simple and unscientific manner, without spaces for oceans, and with rivers unnaturally large, but they are not so badly drawn as to make the identification of countries impossible. These maps are remarkable, as exhibiting the coastline of the land, now known to exist, at the Antarctic Pole. In fact, they have that coast well defined all across the Southern Ocean, as if the Japanese navigators had penetrated further than modern British sailors. These maps have America as largely and as well delineated as the lands of Asia and Europe. Where have these maps disappeared to, I wonder? The form of the map proves the Hindus to have had the most imperfect idea of the art of map construction, but the contents of it equally show that they must have had a very extensive knowledge of the whole world. The antiquity of the map is proved by the nomenclature of the countries. The Hindus are in possession of great geographical knowledge, and their books are replete with ancient histories, in a mythic form, similar to those of Greco. By these books, it is shown that the names of countries, into which the old continent is divided in the present map, are the sons of Agnidra, who himself is the son of Edema and Iva. In this map, Asia and Europe are drawn in the unnatural form of an oval, encircled by the ocean. The observant reader will not fail to notice that in this map, America is distinctly delineated. The ocean is made to surround the old continent. Although there may be inaccuracy in the form in which it is drawn, yet the fact is plain. The ocean, here represented, comprises the Atlantic in the west and the Pacific in the east. Africa is here mentioned by name and must be comprised in the oval so that the geography is not incorrect. Beyond the ocean, there is another land which surrounds the ocean. Of course, that is America. In a map formed upon the construction of a dish, which is the form in which the maps of Herodotus and others are drawn, the geography is perfectly correct. This encompassing land has a chasm in the west. The chasm does really exist. 
It is the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, which divide the two great insular continents of North and South America, and serve as an inlet of approach to both. But the actual identity of this land with America is seen by the name which is given to it and the character said to inhabit it. It is Suvarna Bhumi, or the land of gold. In the geography of India, Suvarna is joined to Swetam Dwipa. They are said to be two parts of one whole. This Swetam Dwipa is a very important place in the Indian history and antiquities, as will afterwards appear. Now Vishnu is said to preside over Swetam Dwipa, so that Swetam Dwipa must be a part of America. In the Asiatic researches, Swetam Dwipa is always called the White Island in the West. Under these circumstances, it is plain that Swetam Dwipa and Suvarna are Hindu names for North and South America. Then, the reader will notice that this land is called the Land of Darkness and that it is full of waters and the abode of the great spirit Vishnu. In this epithet appears the exact name which the North American Indians invariably give to their god. In a later part of this work, it will be shown that the blue and water god, Vishnu, is an impersonation of America. On the whole, the teaching of the map is too plain to be misunderstood. America is distinctly delineated in the oldest Hindu map. 10. A map showing Atlantis. The final map of this video is a spectacular misfit. Then again, maybe not. It's said to have been drawn in 1518 by Pietro Capo. Who saw the world like this in the 1500s? Nobody else. It contains items that remind me of much earlier maps. The way the mountain ranges are drawn, as orderly artificial looking fortresses, is similar to maps from the 1000s and 1100s. There's a huge landmass in the Atlantic. Do you remember my video on the mirror moon map? The moon map says there is a landmass at this exact location. Could this be Atlantis? Conclusion the mainstream teaching about the discovery of America is hostile to human reason, sentience, and ability. It frames humankind as dumb. They were too dumb to cross the ocean, they were too dumb to draw accurate maps, they were making stuff up in their maps. For tens of thousands of years, humans were confined to a small part of the world and never ventured beyond. I don't believe that because I have a higher view of humans. People are capable of extraordinary things and taking a ship across the sea is troll in the park. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.